Hi, so today we're going to be hiking through Wasika Wildlife Sanctuary. This is actually an Audubon site, Mass Audubon, and it's at the edge of Hopkinton, the eastern edge. Holliston uh, town line is just a couple of yards that direction, and farther that way would be the Ashland line. So we're kind of in the corner here between those three towns. It's a beautiful, quiet spot. You will miss the entrance if you go too fast. So it's on the left coming up Clinton Street in Hopkinton. This is uh, 229 acres of wildlife sanctuary. It used to be part of a farm owned by the family connected to the Warren family and also the Loring family. So it's Wasika Wildlife Sanctuary. There are some mosquitoes here, and um, but there are also wonderful heron, great blue heron. There are osprey nesting. We have bluebirds. I hear cicada. And we have the regular chickadees and all those um, smaller birds as well. So it's a beautiful place for birding. We just saw a woman come in with her uh, scope for taking some beautiful photographs. So hikers will like it, photographers will like it. It's a pretty easy hike. Let's go see what's out there. So here we have a warning. Um, this is a wildlife sanctuary and it says in order to protect wildlife, please no vehicles, bicycles, dogs, horses, hunting, collecting, dumping, alcohol, or fires. So we want to protect this wildlife sanctuary and then they emphasize it, no pets please. So we love our pets, but they do not belong on this trail. Um, there actually are nesting ducks, hooded mergansers, and wood ducks, things like that. So we really need to protect the wildlife that's here. So let's see what else we have. So this wildlife sanctuary has some beautiful tall pine trees. It has some lower pine trees, which tells me that they're obviously relatively new. And then it has these beautiful little princess pine, um, just tiny little pine trees, some little white pine growing here. So it has beautiful undergrowth and some, these are sort of a wild berry growing right here as well. Um, raspberry, so some wild raspberry, blackberry. So beautiful undergrowth as well as tall trees. So I just, I love this. There's low beautiful things and tall beautiful things. Let's go see what else we have. So here we are at a trail junction. This is the Sassafras Trail that goes this way and loops back around. The Pitch Pine Trail goes off here. It's a smaller trail with some pitch pines on it, Sassafras over there. And then straight ahead is the main trail. One of the things I love about this trail is that it's wide, flat, very, very quiet and peaceful. I can hear rustling trees and bird sounds. That's all I can hear. So it's beautiful. Let's keep going. Oh look, right here we have blueberry, we have white pine, we have fern, we have sassafras tree and this is the one, as we've said before, that has three different leaves. There's the one that looks like a ghost, there's just the oval, and then there's the one that looks like a mitten. And then we have this beautiful rock here, probably dumped by a glacier beautiful area um, and we just came up the cart path for um, the trail is really a cart path for the farm that used to be here so it's just a beautiful place to walk around and see lots of different vegetation we hear chickadees chipmunks amazing so two minutes farther than the last split in the trail here we are where the trails come back together. We have Sassafras Trail coming back in here, Pitch Pine Trail coming back in here, Main Trail continuing straight, the old cart path. And right next to um, where I just walked through is a beautiful fern undergrowth. So just peaceful, beautiful, lots of green, wonderful forest bathing here. 
So the path is a little grassier here and as we walk along we come into a clearing and some sunshine and wow look at this this is incredible it's a beautiful open pond we have some dead trees in the middle which often would be home for osprey uh, so maybe that's what we'll see I'm actually gonna move a little further I see some water lilies we have dragonfly all kinds of beautiful I hear some different birds than I heard before I don't see any osprey yet but let's keep going and see what we have this is so beautiful here So I'm coming down a path from the dam and I see that this is where beavers are making a pile, making a dam, but they have something called a beaver deceiver here, which is a big wire fence which allows the water to come through and it prevents the beavers from damming up this pond. The outflow from the pond is on the other side of this dam of Chicken Brook. Um, so it's good that this is here preventing the beavers from blocking in all the water. It's better to have the water flowing. We see the mother osprey on the tree and then the nest is behind me. One of the ospreys just came off the nest, um, probably looking for food right there. You coming over here? Thank you. Beautiful. And now that osprey is going to fly over where the other one is. And they're both sitting on the trees. So this is the kind of thing you can see here at Wasika Wildlife Sanctuary. Beautiful wildlife in action. I also see a, a duck nesting box on one of the lower dead trees and that would either be for the wood ducks or the hooded mergansers that come to this peaceful spot to raise their young. I don't see the ducks themselves but that box is there in case they come. Hi, 
right, so the nest is just across the way here. We have two osprey in the trees over here. There's still one in the nest. I'm assuming that's the baby that they're coming in to feed. Um, but the ospreys are waiting over here to see if they can see some fish. And we also saw one of the ospreys fly towards a turkey vulture that was circling over here to, to move that away from the area to protect the nest. And then there was a red-tailed hawk that circled overhead. So lots of things going on here. So the end of the dam is right ahead of me over here, past the beautiful black-eyed Susan and the blueberry bushes. The beavers caused that area to be flooded. The, the path used to go all the way around the pond, but now that's the end of the road for us. So we're gonna head back this way and check out Pitch Pine Pass and Sassafras Trail. So here we have the osprey nest up a little closer. We see the adult osprey on top of the nest. The baby is in the nest and another adult is to the right um, and that one will be doing some fishing. So these osprey nest here every year and um, photographers come to look at them, bird watchers come to look at them. It's amazing for anyone to be able to be this close and see what's happening. The baby will hatch or not is hatched already, but it will be an adult um, in the next two weeks or so, or month, and then it, they will all fly. So here I am coming off the dam and I'm going to take a right on the Sassafras Trail. Pitch Pine goes that way, but we're going to walk this way, check out the Sassafras and I heard there's a hemlock grove over here. So this part of the trail, the Sassafras Trail is marked with blue dots on this side of the tree, which seems to be the east side. And then on the other side of the tree, it's marked with yellow dots. So you know if you're coming or going, let's go. So I'm coming down a side trail that comes off of the Sassafras Trail, which is on the west side of the pond. And as we come down the side trail, we are right across from the osprey nest. So this is even closer than our spot was before. And we can see, I think that's the baby just sitting on the edge of the nest. Um, it's definitely smaller than the other two. And uh, the other two have flown away, um, but everybody's pretty quiet right now. So this is a really good spot. I'm gonna go a little closer, see how close I can get. Yeah, so the osprey doesn't see me here, I, but I do see more duck nesting boxes and a little bit of a beaver dam. So this is a really cool spot. So here we have a beaver lodge and a beaver lodge is basically a pile of sticks that the beavers very carefully build and there's some mud underneath on the inside um, so that they can do their fishing underwater and then they come back into the home from underwater so none of the predators see them or can bother them in their home. I see three, I think I see three from where I'm standing, 
right near each other. So um, they are in the middle because they were not able to dam up that running water area. So we have lots of wildlife here. So this is interesting. We have one, two, three, four, five, areas where the beavers have done their work. And we can see right here that the way this is chewed isn't somebody chopping. There are definite areas all around and the tree is actually still here. So maybe it was too big, I don't know. But this area has definitely been worked on for the beaver dam. And then they just drag it through the woods. So very cool. So as we walk here, there's a fork in the road. We see the blue dot, so we're still on the trail. This loop cuts over to another part of the sassafras, so it makes our walk a little shorter. Oh, this is awesome. This is a beech tree right in here. And beech trees have this really cool bark that looks like an elephant skin a little bit. Um, and what happens is they're real, they get wide and really umbrella-ish on top. So they clear out the forest underneath of them because the sun can't get down here. Um, they are beautiful. This one, however, looks like it's gonna go in a, uh, the next storm or so. It's kind of carved out on this side and leaning, but it's beautiful for now. What a beautiful place this is with all the ferns. Coming up here, we're gonna to come to the Link Trail, which goes off to the side and just connects over to the other side of Sassafras Trail. And then um, over in here, this dark area is the Hemlock Grove. Um, there is a yellow dot on the other side of this tree right here close to me to help us know which direction we're going because this all looks kind of the same. So I appreciate the Blue dots on one side and the yellow dots on the other side of the tree. My next blue dot is there, so I'm going this way. So as we walk through this beautiful area, we see that there is no understory, no lower branches on these trees, and we see a lot of scorch marks, which would indicate that there has been a fire here recently, or maybe more than one fire, um, which is a shame and uh, we hope that people will be careful when they're in the woods. So on the edge of the um, area where the scorch marks are, this would be on the eastern edge of the Sassafras Trail. This is where the Hemlock Grove is. You can see it's beautiful. It's kind of dark, shady. There's no path into there, but these are ferns on the ground, so you could walk in through the ferns if you wanted to. Let's keep going this way. Oh look, so there are hickory nuts on the ground here. And these tell me that there's a hickory tree nearby. So as I look, it, there, the hickory is growing right there. Hickory nuts are, are good for squirrels. I don't think people eat them, but they smell really amazing. So that's kind of a cool thing. And we leave them here because we don't take anything out of that we find. So here we are at the end of the pond. This is the north end, and the trail is gonna to start to loop back over to the main trail now. In this part of the pond, we see a lot of um, tall grasses. We have some bulrushes in this area, and there's a, a pondy area to the left, which tells me that possibly there is a beaver dam over there, because they like to stop the running water to make still water where they can fish for their fish, or um, eat their plants. So here we have a painted turtle setting himself on the log. 
and to the right of him is the beaver dam and the beavers make a dam to stop the water so they have a place where they can fish as I said beaver dam is different from the beaver lodge the lodge is where they live the dam is where they prevent the water from moving So as we walk up here and we're at the end of the, the pond, we see that this trail marking has the yellow and the blue really on both sides, here and here. So this is kind of a turn in the trail. This trail came down and turns this way. This trail comes and goes this way. We're going to keep going this way to hook up with the main trail. So this is interesting because we have two ground bee holes right here. Ground bee holes look a lot like ant hills, but the hole is bigger. It's about the width of a pencil eraser. And um, so once you see this, you really should steer clear because the bees do come and go out of these two holes. I just saw one. And obviously if you get too close, you get stung. So just be aware when you see that. That's a ground bee nest. So as we walk along here, we can see this beautiful deposit of rocks that have been pushed by um, a glacier. So this whole area just got dumped here. This is probably granite. Um, obviously the trees, when they grow out of the granite, don't have a lot of room for their roots, so they tip a little bit. We also have hickory nuts on the ground and ground bees, again. So lots of things to look at. And we can hear the cicadas buzzing in the trees. Cicadas look like a giant fly. And they actually crawl around underground in a little nymph form. And then when they're ready to hatch, they come up on a tree or a, a fence and they hold on and then they hatch out of the back and become that buzzing thing. So as I walk along here, I'm seeing a lot of ground berries, raspberries. We're at the other end of the link trail, and we're also still in an area, or this is a different area, where there is scorching on the lower part of the trees. So there has been a fire here. John Ritz, our fabulous cameraman, says it probably happened in the past, within the past 10 years. So pretty recently, I see a Phoebe over in a tree over there. I can hear it. Phoebe, that's a Phoebe and they, when they rest on the tree, their tail kind of bobs. So it's hard to see, there it goes flying. Cicadas are quieter here, but that doesn't mean they're gone. And we have a nice stone wall here. Again, this used to be a farm. So this was a delineation of whose part of the farm it was, I guess. Still a beautiful old New England stone wall. And the other thing is the fire trucks would have a really hard time getting in here to fight this fire. There are some homes up on the edge of the property, sort of on the western edge of this. So again, it's very difficult to have any kind of fire in here. So here we are at a point on the trail where we can actually sit down if we want to. This beautiful tree has fallen down. It looks like some fire um, caused that fall. There's charring all along here, um, charring down here from fire. But it's a beautiful spot, so we appreciate it. Um, and going along further, we see that this tree was a pretty big tree. And um, the trail continues. We're going to hook up into the main trail pretty soon. So let's go see. So 
so here we are at the end of the sassafras loop. Lots of sassafras in there, lots of wildlife, beautiful trees. And we're going to head out of the wildlife sanctuary on this main trail. This is an Audubon Society sanctuary. So you cannot bring your dog here. Other trails in Hopkinton, you're allowed to have dogs on leashes. But right here, they don't want dogs because it's an Audubon Society. It's a protected wildlife sanctuary. Kids can come here. It's an easy walking trail. Everything's flat. So you should check it out. It's Wasika Wildlife Sanctuary on Clinton Road. I'm going to head back out and I'll see you on our next hike. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org.